Okay, Settlers of Canaan. Well, <laughs> what you've got is basically Settlers of Catan with a fixed board with the numbers all fixed in, as to production. Presumably, to some extent, intending to match, I don't know, Bronze Age uh, production capabilities in Palestine. I have no idea. <sighs> what does that mean? In terms of gameplay, it means that you have far less flexibility, uh, less uh, less variability in terms of what you're going to be presented with with a game. Uh, maybe the first time you play it, you got to figure out this board. It is a weird board in a few ways. The biggest one being that the numbers are clustered. This is kind of an annoying factor. Um, in a way that you get waves of production. So, you know, like the sheep there's three nines on sheep. So if a nine comes up, you're going to get a glut of sheep in the market. This is something that can happen in Catan, but isn't very often the case. Usually, it's the player's own positioning on the board that causes a glut to happen. Where, like, you know, a couple of people have cities on a location that is rich in producing something. Here it's just baked into the game, you know, and what that means is, uh, first of all, you're going to start seeing uh, the play kind of uh, derive, uh, drive itself into a direction that is always the same for that number of players or whatever. People are going to pick the same starting locations, people are going to pick the same strategies based on those and whatever, you know. Uh, and you're going to see a flow uh, of resources that's always dictated by this random placement in Catan. But here, it's just fixed by this particular board. It's got a particular production number on a particular location. And it, it's just, you're going to have a lot less interesting, um, you're going to have a lot less emerging from, from, you know, that random board play that is kind of one of the brilliant things about Catan. That is probably the case with most of the historical Catan uh, variants. So that's a, an initial starting point, which is just kind of problematic with it no matter what. The peculiar choice of fixing certain production numbers to certain types of uh, production and thus really exacerbating the tendency for gluts to happen. Uh, I think that's going to get tired real quick. You know, <laughs> uh, it's it's going to draw the game out more uh, more often, um, and it, it's just going to cause some issues. In general. Again, well, let's let's go on with uh, some other things. What does this bring that's special and magical? The only thing other than the terrain is, that is particularly special in this one is the building of Jerusalem. And that's kind of a neat facet. You have a different type of resource allocation and a fairly cheap one that you can make uh, that can get you... A valuable card it's worth a couple victory points and it gives you this two to one trade capability for one commodity of your choice so whichever commodity you know wins you the game or <laughs> whatever <coughs> but it doesn't feel likely to come into the game early you probably don't want to do this too early although that two to one trade capability could be of value in the middle game there's no question of that but your focus is probably on producing stuff and getting stuff built early on. And 
if you're going to be if you're going to be building for Jerusalem, you're going to be at the bottom of the map, and you're only going to have two tiles connected to your production center, which means you're giving up, you know, uh, a point of production that you would normally get. That's some people uh, I think like to start right on a trade location, even. Uh, I would say there's very few boards in Catan that uh, justify that. There may be, this board may justify that kind of strategy. Uh, this board does not allow you to work well with the city's first strategy, uh, for whatever that's worth. It just, there's not enough, uh, there's not enough ore in the game for that. Um, overall, I guess my feeling with this one, and it probably extends to most of the historical ones, is you're better off spending your money, if you're, if you're a Catan fan, you're better off spending your money getting expansions for Catan, uh, and move to these as sort of a last resort, because of the fixed board issue. Now, I don't know, merchants may be something weird. Uh, it claims to be historical, but I'm not so certain. Um, simply because you're going to get, you know, more variance out of adding some of those additional, uh, expansions to the original game, then you're going to get out of something like this. You might play this a couple of times. There's no question about that. You know, it's, if you love Catan and, 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 you know, you want to experience this particular one, that's great. Uh, the only, su the only subset that I can kind of look at is if for some reason or another, you know, for this one in particular, if there's some reason that like you think that maybe your Bible studies group will be willing to play this, but they wouldn't be willing to try the other one. And maybe it, it's an in into other types of, into other games, um, I don't think that's going to be very uh, a very powerful argument, though. Um, you might get them to play it, and they'll probably say, hmm, "Yeah, that's great. You know, that's fine. Whatever." You know, uh, it doesn't link you very deeply into the history or the biblical uh, side of things or anything along those lines. It is a game of Catan played in a particular setting that just happens to match that biblical era and location. And while there might be a couple of people in such a group who, you know, are nascent gamers just waiting, uh, wait, waiting to see something in this sort of way, uh, and you're trying to maybe corrupt them towards the side of gaming away from uh, the pure, pure, purely religious uh, side of things. You know, honestly, I think you probably can catch their interest just with something else. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't know of people who are serious into gaming and who will only play stuff of a certain subject matter. I know people who are serious about gaming who will avoid a subject matter. In fact, somebody commented uh, on the intro to this along those lines as if this is some horrible genocide being represented here. You know, sure, the Bible includes horrible genocide. Uh, and does that mean you don't want to play anything that's set in, you know... Bronze Age Palestine? I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> I, uh, I'll let you make your own, own decisions on that kind of stuff, but I gotta say, you probably want to stay away from pretty much uh, anything other than 20th century that involves uh, uh, countries and uh, uh, anything along those lines. Uh, any kind of war, obviously. Um, this game, if there's anything like that going on, it is not represented in the game in any sense, so I wouldn't worry about that. Like I said, there, I find it kind of disturbing that there's so little to the game that links to the period. 
Now, what I would really love to see is a game that showed why Jerusalem and other major cities in that area developed the way they did. Uh, I'm pretty sure a new Catan uh, variant was not going to do that. <laughs> Uh, I think I bought this before I had any, like I had my homemade Catan and I had a German version of Catan that like is just the base game. And I've collected more since then and I have not played any of it. Um, I played a fair amount of Catan back in, uh, in the early 90s and, you know, like I said, it's, it's an okay game. You know, and this is an okay game, but clearly inferior to uh, the original. And I, I, I would suggest there are probably, unless you are just an absolute Catan nut, um, there are almost certainly other games that you would rather explore uh, than just, well, I mostly know Catan, so this is going to be easy, whatever. You're not going to get that many plays out of something like this. I think you're going to fall back on, you know, your Catan and your expansions and whatnot uh, first. So it almost kind of feels like just something for the collector, really. Uh, it's not a bad game. <laughs> it's just... It's a hard one to justify having, uh, having been made. And that's about it for me. Oh, you know, I wanted to mention something. So this is Cactus Game Design Company. Like I said, they got the credit, they got the uh, rights to basically put the Catan system in it. Or at least they claim they do. But it's in North Carolina. Uh, that's that's a little odd to me. I, I, I would not consider North Carolina to be a place where I'd want to, where I'd label something as cactus. Just... Yeah, being, having spent some time in the Southwest, <laughs> it felt funny to me when I when I noticed that connection. That's about it, though.